On the one hand, you have Donald Trump. Donald Trump, who stormed out of a New York civil fraud trial where he is a defendant because he didn't like the ruling in a case where he has been repeatedly fined for violating a gag order imposed on him for threatening the judge's law clerk. And then he posted a message in a rage, in a stupor afterwards, calling a New York Times reporter who reported on his conduct. Her name is Maggie Haberman. He called her Maggot Hagerman and then started interacting with the main right-wing MAGA social media influencer account called Cat Turd, which does their polling now for the Republican Party. So that's on the one hand. On the other hand, President Biden ushered in 4.9% GDP growth in the third quarter. Record-breaking. He's overseen the lowest unemployment in American history and whose support of the United Auto Workers led to a historic blockbuster deal with Ford that will see workers pay jump more in four years than all of their pay raises in the past two decades. Y'all remember those Pick Your Adventure books growing up as a kid? I know that I love them. Well, pick your America. Pick your United States of America. And speaking of pick your America, which America do you want to live in? The MAGA Republicans picked the man that they want to lead the world that they live in. Someone who is not representative of America. They picked MAGA Mike Johnson from Louisiana. Someone who believes in total abortion bans at the state and national level. No exception. He says, MAGA Mike says, America is not a democracy. It is a biblical republic, he says. He says, MAGA Mike says, mass shootings are caused by no-fault divorces and the cultural revolution of the 1960s. MAGA Mike, the new speaker of the House, says that Medicare and Social Security need to be cut or abolished because he blames women who get abortions. He says they are at fault for not putting into our society able-bodied workers. That's what MAGA Mike says. MAGA Mike, the Speaker of the House, wants to criminalize same-sex marriage. That's MAGA Mike for you. Choose your country, folks. That is the moment we are in right now. And speaking of choose your country, I refuse to live in a country where mass shootings happen on a daily basis. Another mass shooting. It doesn't have to be this way. At least 18 people have been killed and 13 injured in a shooting rampage at a restaurant and a bowling alley in Lewiston, Maine, by a far right-wing terrorist. I don't use the term militia. I use the term terrorist because that's what this individual was, a terrorist. Enough is enough. At every level, we, the people, deserve better. There is a way out of this MAGA Republican death cult gaslighting dystopian nightmare, and it is the power of the people. And that's what I want to talk about on today's podcast. I'm Ben Micellis. This is the Midas Touch podcast, joined by Brett and Jordy. Jordy, you are back and you were missed by everybody. It's good I started to be back. Getting messages that if Jordy wasn't here today, Ben, you have to let us know that Jordy is okay. He <laughs> definitely is okay. And Jordy, it's great to have you back on the show. Ah, thanks, brothers. I'm so pumped to be here. Shout out to the Midas Mighty. What's going on, everybody? Jordy, you were definitely missed. We, we we missed you a great deal. And you know what? Like w when you're gone for even, what were you on? Two shows. I think it even shows you just how much happens every single day. Because I don't it think, feels what, what like, did I miss? Did I miss something? Uh, did you miss any news? Uh, did you miss any news? It feels like 
10 years worth of news happened in the past <laughs> week really since does. you were last here. And it's really incredible. But what every aspect, Ben, of what you were discussing in your introduction highlights to me is the importance of having actual competent leadership, people who actually want to get things done for the people, a leadership that doesn't simply gaslight people, gaslight their followers, lie about the source of the problem, put off actually doing things under the guise of this isn't the right time to speak. This is the right, they'll just throw our thoughts and prayers out there. This is the right time to take action. We need action. We need action oriented people who are able to look at the problems that lay before them some complex, some not complex, and able to parse the data and are able to actually implement policies that this is going to shock these Republican politicians, but policies that are actually designed to help the average American. And that's what we should all be fighting for here. No matter what side of the aisle that we are on, no matter if you are an independent, a Democrat, or a Republican, or something completely different that I've never even heard of, we should all be seeking competence and we should all want what is best for the people. We need to understand the game that's being played. And it is an asymmetrical game where Democrats, when they are in power, have to be perfect. They have to be 100% in delivering policies for the people. Even if MAGA Republicans pull the rug from under them or, and call in favors from the Supreme Court, which is a right-wing Supreme Court, do everything they can to try to put a federal case in a, in a court where they know how the judge is going to rule, who then issues a nationwide injunction, and the Democrats aren't able to get their policy through, it's asymmetrical. The way legacy media will report about that is the Democrats fail to deliver. And all the MAGA Republicans have to do is destroy government. Their entire game is not deliver for the American people. Mm -hmm. It's their such a good point. Game is how do you destroy the Democratic Party? By the way, the same way they cannibalize themselves. And ultimately, if you look at MAGA Mike being anointed, it is very reminiscent of how you get the most extremist elements of a society governing the majority. If you look at authoritarian states where 20% or 25% of the most extreme are the ones who sometimes govern everybody because sometimes the complacency of everybody else. And it's like, I can't, I mean, you know, the, you know, someone like MAGA Mike who believes that this is a biblical republic, that he is getting a divine message for him to destroy the lives of women, to destroy the lives of the LGBTQ community, that he believes he is God's soldier and will sacrifice his life. Sometimes other people who care and are compassionate are just like, I what am I getting? This person's this person's out of control. I can't control. Mm -hmm. I, just I, I will let them do their thing, and it's not going to be that bad. Yes, it's going to be worse. It's going to be worse than however bad you think it's going to be. The MAGA Mike becoming Speaker of the House, and as you go through some of the things, he's one of these kind of silent surgical fascists who behind the scenes was the one writing the legislation to undercut your rights. One of the things I didn't even say in my intro, he was the one who put together the amicus brief for the case by Ken Paxton in Texas to try to overthrow the 2020 election. I even mentioned that piece. So here you have an architect quietly in the background, who surgically dismantled the fabric of our great democracy, who surgically has worked to destroy our diversity, someone who's worked to overthrow our free and fair elections. This is someone now who is the leader of the Republican Party. Now, they may try to create a bunch of messaging to distract people and to make it seem that it's not that bad. It is worse than how bad you think it is. And what you need to do, what we need to do, though, to be solution-oriented, going back to it, is you have to understand the game. 
It is critical that we hold Democrats and the pro-democracy community accountable. But in holding them accountable, let us not lose sight that people who hold themselves accountable should not forfeit from this incredible thing called our democracy and cede power to actual fascists to who don't hold themselves accountable. That is what we saw this week. And it's a fascism meets idiocracy. This is not the America that we should want to live in where you have a cult leader like Donald Trump posting on social media text messages from MAGA Republicans saying that there are loyalty oath tests that speakers have to take to Donald Trump while this Donald Trump is interacting with a cat feces social media account called Cat Turd, that they're getting their polling from some rando in Florida who no one even knows in the town that he lives in who this person is. It's not polling. Who, it's it's a, a Twitter poll on a pro-Trump <laughs> account. It's like, like let's not, let's not actually pretend like this is real polling that Donald Trump is pulling. I mean, I think what I called the cat feces polling. I hope I didn't give the, the I, it, it, it made it sound like this guy had an operation out of a swamp in Florida, but like there's no operation here. He put a poll on his pro MAGA account. And Ben, the way that these extremist Republicans often come to power, it's the same story over and over and over again. It's these Republicans who gerrymander themselves into these deep red districts and then make it so they basically run unopposed. I mean, I, I I think this new speaker, his first two elections, he at least he ran unopposed in his in his district mm. because it was gerrymandered in a way that made it impossible for a Democrat to actually win a seat. And if you look at all these extremist Republicans throughout the country, they are all in these very safe districts where it is safe for them to make these extremist proclamations and take these extremist stances. Look at Marjorie Taylor Greene's district. Look at Jim Jordan's district. Look around the country and you will see how they have actually rigged the maps in their favor. And then to just elaborate for one moment on what Ben was saying, I mean, let's take student debt relief as an example, right? President Biden, the Biden administration doing all they can in their power to try to cancel student debt. What do the Republicans do? The Republicans do everything they can to strike that down. And that's despite all the money that they themselves received in loan forgiveness with the PPP loan program, when many of these people just completely scammed the government out of millions and millions and millions of dollars. So what does the Biden administration do? They do as much as they can, right? They do as much as they can on a federal basis with executive orders. They end up at this point, it's something like $127 billion that they've canceled in student debt relief, affecting more than 3.6 million Americans. And what happens though? You have people who fall for the Republican game, which is sabotage, sabotage, sabotage. And they go, oh, Biden's not keeping his promise on the student debt thing. But no, 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 that's not how the game works. The Republican Party, they want to starve the beast. They want to take away the programs that actually help the people so that when people get upset, what do they do? They go, oh, look, I told you the government doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I told you that wasn't going to happen. It's not happening because of you. People are dying by gun violence because of you. It's not this just, oh, the government isn't doing its job. Oh, there's all this partisanship. There's all this chaos in Washington. No, it's coming from a source. And we need to point it out. And we need to point it out clearly. I want to show you, too, like they are making their extremism very clear. Believe them when they are telling you. I wanted to show you this clip. By now, um, it's been circulating. I want to give a uh, shout out also to uh, Asen, uh, one of our digital editors, for kind of finding this clip from uh, the C SPAN, where an incredible reporter from ABC asked this question. This was before MAGA Mike became Speaker of the House. And the question was, and by the way, the MAGA Republicans held a press conference, right? That means they invited the press to ask them questions. What kind of questions do you think are going to be asked 
at a press conference. It wasn't even like a reporter like chased them during the, in the halls of Congress, which by the way, they would have the right to ask questions in the halls okay. of Congress. This was a press conference. So the reporter says, you helped lead the effort to overturn the 2020 election. By the way, I think this has been viewed by like 50 million people now. If you look at Asin's account and all the other accounts, shout out to him. And by the way, to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. If you, we're going to talk a lot about the impact that this independent journalism is having at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Um, let me show you this uh, this right here. Play this clip of the reporter asking the question. You helped lead the effort to overturn the 2020 election and watch what these MAGA Republicans do. And all the credit really also belongs to Rachel Scott, the reporter who asked that question. And just that image impacted me so much. Mm -hmm. When I saw Rachel Scott get yelled at and the group of people surrounding um maga mike and like i had to sit like i literally sat down on the floor my fiance walked in and like saw me just like sitting on the floor right kind of where i was watching it on my phone because i was like like is this is i didn't recognize my country in that and it looked like it was right out of the handmaid's tale even the way it was shot i mean just like the whole the whole thing was so chilling just just to even witness and it just goes to show it's like they want to pretend that things in our recent history never happened that is that's how these MAGA republicans are gonna you know steamroll through 2024 elections at least that's what they think but thank goodness they're pro-democracy folks just like the Midas mighty and everyone who listens to this podcast and watches the video on the network that's gonna hold them accountable every step of the way so when they go no no shut up get away from me reporter when it's a very legitimate question that they have to answer that they will be held accountable for that you could bet that he's going to be asked that now every every time he gets a question and if he's not it's a shame on those reporters because they should be grilling him on that exact question every single time I'll and show she you was here. asking him about his votes to overturn the election for those asking and saying they couldn't hear the question. That's what she was asking about. And that was their response. And Jordy, to your point, also, one of the things they do is they try to dilute the meaning of words to the point where they don't actually mean anything anymore. Right. So there's a protest near the Capitol, organized protest at the Capitol. They scream insurrection. Right. They start making these sham impeachment inquiries into Biden to try to take away from the real serious impeachment inquiries and impeachments of Donald Trump. It's all about taking the past and trying to rewrite it and reshape it and then reframe the meaning of words so that their followers regurgitate these words with a completely different meaning, rendering them useless. That is their strategy. And they oh, run this absolutely. playbook every single time. And go one step further there brett because there there's a direct line between what you just said there and them using the term expert you know what i mean when they're talking about <laughs> when they're talking about Fauci, somehow this republican party has made the term expert or activist bad words for their followers to just reverberate into the world and it's it, it, it it's very chilling to see yeah, absolutely all right marjorie taylor green saying that the reason that she voted against tom emmer is because he voted to certify the 2020 election and voted to codify marriage equality. Play this clip. But I couldn't support him for Speaker of the House. Um, uh, his voting record is what turned me. He had voted against President Trump's ban on transgenders in the military. He voted for the Democrats' gay marriage bill that opens up uh, churches and other places for lawsuits if they, if they use their faith and stand against it. He was for the national popular vote. Um, at one time, and that's that's not a movement I can support. Had you how, how much did Emmer's vote to certify the 2020 election have to do with the opposition against him? Well, it played a big role for me. I voted to object, um, and, and I don't think uh, that that was a fair election. I think there was a lot of election fraud. Donald Trump lost by 7 million votes. He got destroyed in the electoral college in multiple, multiple states. The fact that I even have to talk about this, the fact that you have a Republican party that is 
rejecting a Speaker of the House who certified the election is the very definition of fascism. And when I say you have to realize the game they're playing and what's asymmetrical is you go back to 2000 with the Democrat, like in Al Gore, who most likely won that election but didn't have the votes on the United States Supreme Court. He knew that with the hanging chads, it was a foregone conclusion that the way it was going to happen was he would ultimately lose. And it was part and parcel because of the way the Supreme Court was structured. So he gracefully declared that he lost and said that it's time that we now unite as a country. Right? And just think about the ripple effect of that. Think about the addition of other Supreme Court justices thereafter. Think about how that decision right there and what went down in one state, Florida, not where Donald Trump got blown. It was a blowout election. <laughs> I forget. It was a, sure, there were close margins in different states, but it was a blowout in the popular vote. And then when you take the aggregate of a lot of states and look at the Electoral College, it was a blowout. But then you think also about how then with George W. Bush, that leads to the appointment of other Supreme Court justices who gut the Voting Rights Act, gutting the Voting Rights Act, guts the preclearance requirement that prevented state legislatures from putting forward racist gerrymandered maps. They had to be pre-cleared. Pre-clearance was gutted. And now we have a situation where Racist gerrymandered maps are routinely, know the game, know the asymmetry, are being put forward by Republican legislatures. And by the way, sometimes where they're extra egregious and racist, like we saw in some recent rulings by the United States Supreme Court, they'll strike down the map, but they have what's called the Purcell principle, some other bogus principle that the Supreme Court creates, just this concept that they create to justify their actions, which is we have to give deference to what the state legislature says in the first instance before an election, if we get close to an election, and then we can revisit it after the election. Right. So when you talk about, you know, a big decision that was reached today in federal court in Georgia, right, striking down the racist gerrymandered maps there, these are overtly racist gerrymandered maps. Well, now, if you're a Republican, you argue Purcell principle, Purcell principle, we're getting close to the election. The convenience so is it's always close to an election because elections are always to exactly. your end. And that's how the game is. That's played. how the game is played. And then they say, oops, it's close to the election. So we have to keep the gerrymander maps. The very fact, even though the MAGA Republicans were predicting red wave, red wave with everything that they did, the five seats were based on improper gerrymandering. You know, that yeah, they wouldn't have a majority not, right now. Like it's an illegitimate majority. It's, like people they need got a based on things that are going to be overturned. And then if you're a state, a Republican state where cor for Democrats, you can't be corrupt. Right. If Democrats corruption, Democrats are so focused on. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are corrupt Democrats out there. And when there are, you call it out. But systemically, Democrats get destroyed for corruption. Right. Like. That ends the career. For Republicans, corruption is how you rise through the ranks. Democrats, you have to focus on, I got to deliver everything for the people. I've got to be perfect. And if corruption is found, I don't get rewarded. The incentive structure of the Republican Party is to reward that behavior. And so again, you have the asymmetry where now the Republicans control the majority. Now you get MAGA Mike. And watch what MAGA Mike's going to do. They're going to try to shut down the government. That's my MAGA Mike was put in place in part to destroy the economy where MAGA believes they are vulnerable is that there is an economic turnaround taking place. They want they wanted to saddle the country with inflation. They were the ones who added $8 trillion. They printed more money than anyone in the history of the United States. They're responsible for a quarter of all debt and slightly more than that in a four-year period. They want to create the fire and blame the Dems. 
They want to create the chaos and confusion at the border. They don't want comprehensive immigration reform. They love running on the chaos. They love having their cameras there so that they could get engaged in this performative outrage. You need to know the game that they are playing pro-democracy community and not fall into the trap of what they are trying to do and what they are trying to create. And they realize that they're vulnerable. Oh, for most of us, this is a great news. 4.9% GDP growth in the third quarter. Donald Trump was bragging about 2.5% GDP growth. Yeah, I have all of the receipts for that. Go look at that Biden-Harris account, by the way, which is crushing it. They would, and the media would go, oh, Donald Trump's great for the economy, 2.5% GDP growth. We just doubled that. The lowest unemployment in history and MAGA Republicans, they were high-fiving with this inflation stuff. And now that President Biden's got it under control, now that things could look like we are headed towards an economic boom that's never been seen in the history of the United States of America, the MAGA Republicans are scared. They want to destroy all of this for power. And if you don't believe me, just look at what they did amongst themselves for power. You don't think they're willing to destroy this great American experiment, destroy our economy, destroy your lives, promote more crime, promote more confusion at the border for power? This crew led by MAGA Mike? I want to go through the receipts that we have on MAGA Mike Johnson, and I want to give a hat tip to our editorial staff who broke the story today that's now being reported everywhere about how Mike Johnson previously said that mass shootings are the result of the cultural revolution of the 1960s and no-fault divorces. What? That is who's leading the Republican Party today at the congressional level, and the other person is posting messages to a cat feces, cat turd social media account. Folks, wake up, but we're in this together. If you want to support the growth of the independent journalism and you're seeing the impact that we have, I mean, heck, Donald Trump and Don Jr. attacked Midas Touch this week. That should, if you want to see impact, that's impact right there. Go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash M-E-I-D-A-S-T-O-U-C-H. We do not have outside investors here at Midas Touch, so help us build this independent media platform right now where more people watch us on YouTube Digital than watch CNN or Fox and pretty much anywhere else at this point. And that's thanks to you, the Midas Mighty. Go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Let's pull out the receipts on MAGA Mike and Donald Trump's day in court and more after we take our first quick break of the day. Let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Zbiotics. Now, if you're like me, you've probably skipped a workout because of drinks the night before. Like, it happens. But if you're committed to your healthy routine, you need Zbiotics. Zbiotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Now, I can't lie. After we hit 1 million subscribers, I may have partied a little bit too much that night. But luckily, I knew I had Zbiotics. Now, as instructed, I drank a bottle of Zbiotics before any alcohol, and I was amazed at just how good I felt the next day. Give Zbiotics a try for yourself. Go to zbiotics.com slash Midas to get 15% off your first order when you use Midas at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, head to zbiotics.com slash Midas and use the code Midas at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode. My old mattress was low quality and it would overheat while my partner and I were laying in it together, making for a terrible night's sleep. I'm so excited to say that this episode is brought to you by Eight Sleep. This is transformative. There's nothing worse than 
tossing, turning, or sweating in the night because you're too hot. The pod cover by 8 Sleep will keep you cool all night, all the way to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, so you wake up fully refreshed. The pod cover by 8 Sleep fits on any bed like a fitted sheet. The pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting the temperature on each side of the bed based on your and your partner's individual needs. It can cool down and warm up and adjust based on the phases of your sleep and the environment that you are in. I love eight sleep because we spend almost half of our lives in bed, improving our sleep routine, habits, and overall sleep quality should be a priority for everyone. It's been a true game changer in my life. I love the temperature control and that both me and my partner can set our side to each of our likings. I wake up feeling refreshed after a great night's sleep, allowing me to start the day off right. Eight Sleep's technology is incredible. For example, thanks to the pod sleep and health tracking, you can wake up to a personalized sleep report for you each morning that offers insights on how certain behaviors like late night exercise or caffeine impact your sleep and overall health. I've never experienced sleep like this. And the pod's cooling technology has been a lifesaver. Invest in the rest you deserve with 8 Sleep Pod. Go to 8sleep.com slash Midas, spelled E-I-G-H-T-S-L-E-E-P dot com slash Midas, and save $150 on the pod cover. That's the best offer you'll find. Stay with 8 Sleep. Now shipping within the USA, Canada, the UK, select countries in the EU and Australia. Now back to our show. Ben, encroaching on my ad territory over here. Come on, man. Come on. You you leave for two episodes. I leave for two episodes. And all all of a sudden, Ben's like an all-star ad. That's why you guys, to me, are so (laughs) annoying. Like when we did the website, quick tangent, when we started with the Midas Touch website, all of a sudden, you guys became like expert writers. Like it's it's just been incredible to see. And now Ben's just stealing my thunder with, with the ad reads. Anyway. If, if you're in the market for those products, the links are in the description of this episode and they really help. And, and they're just awesome, awesome products. Even if Ben does do the reads amazingly. Good job, Ben. And by the way, links to all of our podcasts as well in the description. I don't think a lot of people realize that, that we have all of the shows on the Midas Touch Network. You could find them just one click away in the descriptions to these episodes. You can find the link to our Patreon here in the description to our episodes. And as Jordy said, our incredible uh, sponsors who support this pro-democracy movement. We are grateful for it all. Uh, go, go there and check it out. So Such Ben, an older brother this, move. <laughs> this, this dystopia um, of this new speaker of the house. These clips are not from the handmaid's tale. Mm. This is our new reality under MAGA Mike, MAGA Mike Johnson. Let's roll through some of these clips because I think if we just said, if we just tried to paraphrase what he was saying, I don't even think folks would believe it because it's that crazy and that extreme. So Ben, I'll let you take it away. Where should we begin here? Exhibit A. Let's start with Exhibit A, according to Mike Johnson. I want to make this Exhibit A because of the horrific, horrific mass shooting by a terrorist in Lewiston, Maine. You know, I was at dinner last night when I heard the news and a manhunt is underway. This is a uh, terrorist. They say right wing militia. I call it terrorism because that's exactly what it is. And, you know, one of the individuals, and I'm not going to say his full name, who was part of our, um, our, our university uh, program back in the day, um, lived in the area. Unfortunately, he's, he's, he's alive and, and, and he's healthy. He, he knew, though, the shooter and described him as someone you would stay away from. Uh, lived in the area, would always talk about guns and bring guns around and was part of, they said, right-wing militias, but but that's terrorism. That's terrorism right there. So let's go to see what Mike Johnson has said before about mass shootings. This is Exhibit A. Play the clip. Oh, some of y'all were around in the late 60s. You remember that what that was about, the counterculture revolution, Woodstock and drugs and peace and free love and all that, but more about the undermining of the foundations of religion and morality. Because you, if you remember, in the late 60s, we invented things like no-fault divorce laws. We invented uh, the sexual revolution. 
We invented um, uh, radical feminism. We invented legalized abortion in 1973, where, the, where the, the state, the government, sanctions the killing of the unborn. All these things happened because as collectively as Americans, we began to get together in, in growing numbers and thumb our nose at the Creator and say, we don't believe that anymore. We're rejecting the Founders' natural law philosophy in favor of moral relativism, and we are going down another path. Now, what we tolerate in moderation, our children excuse in excess. What happens when you fast forward another 30 or 40 years? Well, here's a picture's worth a thousand words. Go to the next one for me. I mean, we know that we're living in a completely amoral society. And so people say, how can a young person go into their schoolhouse and open fire on their classmates? Because we've taught a whole generation, a couple of generations now of Americans, that there is no right and wrong, that it's about survival of the fittest, and you evolve from the primordial slime. Why is that life of any sacred value? Because there's nobody sacred to whom it's owed. None of this should surprise us. And it leads in, in the next slide for me, it leads into just uh, chaos. You and your colleagues walk around the halls of Congress wearing AR-15 pins. You all send each other Christmas cards holding AR-15s with your children. Let's look in the mirror here about what is going on. Show you this next clip, Exhibit B. Here is MAGA Mike calling to ban same-sex marriage. Play Exhibit B. If you change the definition of marriage, then you open the floodgates for, for chaos and sexual anarchy. Here's Exhibit C. The Republican Speaker of the House now, MAGA Mike, saying that we live in a biblical republic, not a democracy. You know, we don't live in a democracy because a democracy is two wolves and a lamb deciding what's for dinner, okay? It's not just majority rule. It's a constitutional republic. And the founders set that up because they followed the biblical admonition on what a civil society is supposed to look like. Exhibit D, MAGA Mike calling to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, and that's his number one priority. Play this clip. Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult as somebody dedicated to principles of, of limited government to see the ballooning out of the deficit and a complete abandonment of entitlement reform. Your yeah. thoughts? We'll start with Mike and we'll go to Mark. We have to get back to it as a number one priority. The CBO says that entitlement spending, which they define as Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, interest on the debt, right? Those four obligations, we eclipse GDP in, what, a dozen years or something. I mean, this is not... This can can no longer be kicked down the road. You can't wait eight years to address this. It has to happen yesterday. So um, we, we have to have our hand at the wheel and do this. We are completely derelict in our duty. We're rearranging furniture on the Titanic if we don't get this problem under control. Eight trillion dollars. Such a, a big number that it, it may be hard to comprehend, but it should have. Eight trillion dollars. That you, MAGA Mike, Donald Trump, and the MAGA Republicans added to our deficit. Eight trillion dollars. If that's not the definition of sociopathic behavior, I, I don't know what is. Y'all created the problem. And now you want to take away vulnerable communities after adding eight trillion dollars by giving tax breaks on private jets and yachts to your billionaire friends, we need to recognize what it is that they are doing. And we need to call it out like we do here on the Midas Touch Network with surgical precision. Sometimes we need to repeat it collectively over and over again, because sometimes it's hard to register for me, you know about you, Wait a minute, eight trillion dollars. That's all they added. Eight trillion. Yeah, they did. It's hard. And they're the ones calling to, to take away Social Security and Medicare because the deficit's so high. Yeah. That they created. Yeah. That doesn't make sense, Ben. I know. <laughs> I know. That's what we have to call them out. That is what they did. Eight trillion dollars t like trump eight trillion dollars to the deficit and now that they blew up the economy and president biden's fixing it what do they do go after the firefighter the people who started the fire the arsonists go after the firefighters blame the firefighter for the fire that is being put out and then say 
you're going to go after Social Security and Medicare. And then the moment you're in power, how many jets do you want written off on your taxes, billionaires? Infinite? Okay, we'll give you 100% write-off. You got it. Whatever you want. Yachts? Y yachts, anybody? Go for it. You get the yacht write-off. That's really what happened. And Democrats were warning about it. So you have to, and, and when we analyze actually people who attend some of these Trump events, and if you if you actually get into the issues with the people, if you made all of these issues referendums and you said, where do you stand? Protect Social Security, yes or no. Protect Medicare, yes or no. Common sense gun reform, yes or no. Improve education, yes or no. Better working conditions, yes or no. Increase the minimum wage to a living wage to a wage with dignity, yes or no. Protect unions, yes or no. Protecting women's right to control her body, we've seen how that's gone down in votes in red states. That's why they want to prevent them from even coming up for vote. Yes or no. Allow a woman to control her body, yes or no. Allow LGBTQ plus to marry who they want to marry, love each other, live their lives with dignity, yes or no. Yes or no. You went through every one of these issues. They align with Democrats and more broadly, just the pro-democracy, compassionate, silent majority that exists in the United States. So why don't we see that in the actual results? Well, because those billions of dollars in tax cuts that are going to billionaires, if they just spend a fraction of it, to prop up propaganda machines and spend billions of dollars to try to manipulate the media and just demo demonize Democrats, make Democrats seem worse to work with than Vladimir Putin and Russia. That's what they say. That's what MAGA Republicans say. And it's amplified by a massive billion-dollar media network and networks. That's what they do. And so... A hardworking person, I get, I get why sometimes the propaganda works. Like I, I'm sympathetic to it because Americans who are having their Medicare or in lots of red states now getting removed from the roles of Medicaid, who are getting their health care, a lot of bad things are happening to them. They're confused. They don't know where to look. They're working really hard. They have to work multiple jobs. They come back tired from work. I get it. Turn on the TV, looking for an answer. You turn on the, you turn it on. And Fox is saying it's Biden's fault. And they're called news. Fox is saying it's Biden and the Democrats and that the Democrats are destroying our culture. And they're being pumped billions of dollars to try to manipulate hardworking Americans to vote and actually vote against their interests. Here's MAGA Mike. Again, MAGA Mike railing against Roe v. Wade, arguing that if women were forced to give birth to more able-bodied workers, then they wouldn't have to go and cut Social Security. Blaming women. Play this clip. Roe v. Wade gave constitutional cover to the elective killing of unborn children in America, period. You think about the implications of that on the economy. We're all struggling here to, to cover the bases of Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and all the rest. If we had all those able-bodied workers in the economy, we wouldn't be going upside down and toppling over like this. Listen, the gentleman I will not yield. I will not. Roe was a terrible corruption of America's constitutional jurisprudence. So, it's such a creepy, weird, bizarre, offensive statement to make mm -hmm. to somehow blame women for the, your need to cut Social Security and Medicare. I did it because you made me do it because you, you would not turn able bodied people like, like it's straight like, out of the handmaid's tale. And it reminds me of the Madison Cawthorn line that he got rightfully, uh, you know, hit over where he called women earthen vessels. This guy who's now the Speaker of the House is referring to women in the same exact way. It is straight out of 1984. It is straight out of The Handmaid's Tale. This is no way to speak about human beings, and it is disgusting to use that as your frame for why you should cut programs that help people so much. And this is why also mm -hmm. building off what Ben was saying before, this is why you, you always wonder why are Republicans talking about Dr. Seuss so much? 
Why are they talking about Mr. Potato? Why do they care so much about Bud Light? Right? Because those are the wedge issues that they get around all of this other stuff. If they can make you really angry, right? Oh, they're they're taking your Bud Light away from you. Bud Light's gone woke. Those Democrats, oh, they're taking away your dishwasher now. Look up the, the Dr. Seuss. You grew up with Dr. Seuss, and look what they're doing to Dr. Seuss. It's because they're able to use that to get to those people who would, in any other circumstance, want to vote to save their Social Security, want to vote to save their Medicare. But instead, you have these billionaire interests, these billionaires that are getting richer and richer and richer than ever, that are frankly manipulating the population with their money to liken that movie up when they go, squirrel, squirrel. And the dog looks at the squirrel. That's what they're doing to the American people. That's what they are doing to viewers who are susceptible to those sorts of tactics. And it works. And it works very effectively. Here he writes on a post. This is from June 25th, 2022. MAGA Mike writes, perform an abortion and get imprisoned at hard labor for one to 10 years and find $10,000 $10,000 to $100,000. And then I'll show you this last clip of MAGA Mike, um, where MAGA Mike basically says that there shouldn't be a separation of church and state. Play this clip of MAGA Mike from 2016. Play the clip. What, what's happened, Alex, over the last 60, 70 years is that our generation has been convinced that there's a separation of church and state, right? Mm-hmm. You heard that term right. all the time. And most people think that that's part of the Constitution, mm-hmm. but it's not. Mm-hmm. Remember, I'm a constitutional lawyer. Okay, so that right there is MAGA Mike. And, and I'm looking in the comments. I Here is what they're relying upon us, the silent majority, to fall into a trap, though, too. Part of their game is to make you feel discouraged. Part of the trap is to make you feel like They are bigger than they are, that their tactics can never be stopped, and that you may as well just give up now because defeat is inevitable. That is how fascist movements historically win. That is what they are relying on, that they've got Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert, who just don't give a... There is no shame. And so that they'll just bulldoze everybody. It's why we're in October, towards the end of October 2023 now. We need to make sure that we stick together Mm -hmm. in this pro-democracy community. We're in this together. This community that you built, the Midas Touch community that you built, that, that we are honored to be a part of, we all support each other. And what we care about here is love and compassion and treating people with decency and being unapologetically pro-democracy. To have a compassionate community where we support each other. Will we always agree on everything? We won't. We agree that we must preserve, protect, and defend our democracy. And we must try to aspire to be good people and care about each other and respect each other. And we want to take out the nastiness and we want to just go about our lives. And by the way, what I'm talking about right there, when people are like, oh, you must be these far leftists. I just want to be a good person. I I don't use those labels. Sure, if you look at a lot of my views, would you say, oh, that's a liberal progressive? Yeah, sure. But I, I I don't use those terms. I'm an American. And I care about our democracy. This is a pro-democracy media network. And I welcome real conservatives. Welcome them. If they're actually conservative, not the MAGA mutation. They want to talk and we can have discussions on ideas that we may disagree with. Sure. Independents, people not affiliated with political parties, progressives, liberals. I I disagree with Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger on a lot of issues. We fundamentally understand the importance of our democracy. We can disagree on issues through a framework of honest and careful and diligent debate. I'm open to that. But this MAGA Republican, that is not a normal political party. It is a fascist movement. 
and we need to call it out for what it is. We all can't be discouraged and it's so critical. Share these videos. When we make these videos every day, just one friend, two friends, three friends, a family member, a coworker, a neighbor, a colleague, share the message and let's keep on building this network together. Don't worry. Show isn't done. We still got a lot to discuss. I want to talk about what went down in the courts. I want to talk about Donald Trump's temper tantrum, some of special counsel Jack Smith's recent filings. We'll talk about some other things as well. I'll also say, Ben, we got an exclusive clip from Michael Cohen's attorney who was on today with Karen Friedman Agnifilo that we're excited to show to take you inside the courtroom at the very moment where Donald Trump threw a tantrum, stormed out of the court with the people in the courtroom gasping at his actions. We will show that to you right after this quick break. Oh, hey, when did you get here? Let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Henson Shaving. Look, everyone knows how annoying cheap razors are. The cuts, the irritation, the frustration. And don't get me started with subscription razor services. The headaches that those can cause. That's why you got to meet Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the ISS. That's the International Space Station and Mars Rover. And now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. Razor blades, they're like diving boards. The longer the board, the more wobble, the more wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. A bad shave, it, it isn't a blade problem. It's an extension problem. By using aerospace-grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of human hair. That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration-free shave. It gets better. The razor has built-in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson Shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no obsolescence. The Henson razor, it works with standard dual edge blades to give you that old school shave with the benefit of new school tech. Once you own the Henson razor, it's only about $3 to $5 per year to replace the blades. My first shave with the Henson razor was incredibly refreshing. The design is sleek and the durability is top notch. The Henson razor is truly much better than your run of the mill quote unquote traditional razor brand. And the affordability factor is absolutely game changing. No more wasting your money on expensive blades. With Henson shaving, you get a year year of blades for just $5. Okay, so here's what you have to do. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash Midas to pick the razor for you and use code Midas and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash Midas and use code Midas. And now back to the video. Jordy, you go all in on those ads, man. It's Love good it, stuff. man. Well, absolutely, man. They put their trust in us. We're going to we're gonna deliver and over deliver. So look, if you're in the market for those types of products, links in the description, go ahead, click it, use our code Midas. I just want to say this real quick. And, and Ben, I, I loved everything you said right before we hit the break. I saw a few comments of people being really discouraged uh, of those clips that we were showing of MAGA Mike. I, I just ask you for all those people who are like, I, you know, I've, I, I'm discouraged. Basically, turn that discouragement into motivation as we run through 2024. That's what's on the line. But remember, we have this community and our choir will always sing louder than that fascist choir, whether or not, you know, they know that to be true. It certainly is. So do everything in your power. Register friends to vote. Ask your neighbors, ask your friends, ask your coworkers that you think are going to be voting alongside the pro-democracy values that, that, that we instill here at the network that you have as well. And let's do everything in our power to make sure MAGA Mike is only in this you know, situation for as short of a period of time as he can be. And just use that as fuel and energy to make you run through 24. Well, here's the thing, right? MAGA Mike's 
existed throughout American history. Mm-hmm. It's not MAGA Mike just emerged as the speaker and whoa, where did it come from? It feels a little bit like that. But the creation of MAGA Mikes, this kind of uh, fascist meets religious extremism, was re- don't get me wrong, the, the roots are always there in American history, so I don't want to downplay this. But like uh, a movement was really percolating with Nixon and a group of people who thought that Nixon was treated unfairly. You see those people like Roger Stone right now who has a tattoo of Nixon on his back. So really, really through Ronald Reagan and a lot of the destruction of the government that was taking place, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, the composition of the Supreme Court is why I talked earlier about just some of the moves that the Supreme Court was making, gutting the Voting Rights Act. These were very popular on a bipartisan basis, things that when our country came together, you know, decades ago. And so... The MAGA Mike and, and Justice Alito's and Neil Gorsuch's and Kavanaugh's and Amy Coney Barrett's and Clarence Thomas's and Jim Jordan's and Matt Gates and they've always existed, but they've been doing it in a more historically insidious but quiet way, picking apart the fabric of our democracy, right? Donald Trump comes in and just says it. He, he's he's giving the same way he reveals classified information. Um, he's revealing their playbook in a way that's just kind of more overt and more in your face. Yeah, Trump, Trump exposed it. I mean, Trump, Trump exposed what the movement always stood for forever, but this actually has been going on for a very long yeah. time. I mean, even before Trump, remember there was the tea party movement. There were, mm-hmm. there have been movements like this for a very long time. And oftentimes even back in the day, individuals like Maga Mike were working just behind the scenes or quietly. And you see the way he presents himself, right? It reminds me of almost, it's different, but it's similar. It reminds me of almost the Glenn Youngkin kind of strategy, right? You are extreme, but you wear a vest and you look like a dad. And so you could slide through all these extremist policies, right? You got MAGA Mike, he's got his hair slicked back. He's got a suit on. He's not boisterous like Trump. And so he thinks that he could slide past all this extremism right past you. But that's why it's important that we bring up all these clips. And I also just want to say that we do have a safeguard at this moment in time against the MAGA mics in the world. That is because we control the Senate just barely, but the Democrats do control the Senate. And obviously Joe Biden is president of the United States. So it's not like MAGA Mike is going to be able to snap his fingers and ban abortion in this country tomorrow. That is not going to happen. But that's also why it's important up and down the ballot to be up and down the ballot to be voting for pro-democracy candidates. Because Having control of each chamber of government is equally important, and it could stop bad actors like this from being able to implement their extreme beliefs on the entire nation. And that's where we're at right now. We have safeguards, but we need to stay protected, and we need to get rid of this MAGA mic problem in 2024 in the elections before it consumes the other branches of government. And that's why you are here, because you are at the front lines of protecting our democracy here. On the so think side. about being MAGA Mike and you're like, I don't oh, want really? to. Here's, here's the issue, everybody. We all need to come together and love and the erosion of our values that are being caused by this meanness, this dysfunction in our society. Think about like that bullshit routine right there, right? Mm-hmm. And then... <laughs> okay, 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 MAGA Mike, here's your leader. Put this post up of Donald Trump calling Maggie Haberman maggot Hagerman today. So, so, so the, the, these are your values. Got, got it. I understand. Writer Maggot Hagerman of the failing New York Times wrote almost her entire fake story today about the Trump-hating judge's gag order. They love to silence me. Rather than the racist attorney general's star witness choking like a dog on the witness stand and admitting that I never asked him to do anything wrong, he also admitted that he lied to Congress under oath. Again, brand new charges. That means they no longer have a witness or case, blah, 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 blah. You know, when I think about the the kind of MAGA Mike 
and and the right I call it maga splaining too, right? It's like it's soci it's sociopathic behavior. They want to lecture you on fiscal conservative. Let me teach you how you need to be dealing with your finances. You, 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 you hear me here? It's like, I don't need you to mag explain. You added $8 trillion to the deficit. You, 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 you created all of, all, all, all of these issues, the mag explainers. Let me tell you how you need to live a, a, a moral life. Okay, well, you've got Donald Trump who is threatening porn stars, was found to be liable in a sexual assault case by a jury, who uh, is posting maggot Hagerman, who's engaged in massive financial fraud, who tried to overthrow our democracy. So I, I don't need to be MAGA-splained. You know, it is always, remember I talked about the Purcell principle earlier in the show, which is if we get too close, to the election, we have to keep the racist gerrymandered maps. Whether you call it the Purcell principle, whether they go states' rights, whether they say they're textualists until you actually read the text of the Constitution and the Second Amendment uses the words well-regulated militia, which they then say, eh, I'm a strict textualist, but don't read that text. That text, like Johnson, Johnson, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but there's actually no separation of church and state in the Constitution. A so, lot of, yeah. So what they do that. is they create a framework where they don't even have to have serious conversations. They can just go to the, I'm a strict textualist. I'm for states' rights. Okay, well, you're for states' rights, but you want a national abortion ban with no exceptions? Well, yeah, that's because it's a biblical republic. Like, they'll just go and you, boop, boop, label, 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 and it's whack-a-mole with them, and you can't have serious conversations. Their frameworks to allow their sociopathic behavior, which is all just about power to work. That's what these frameworks are that they create. You're, you're not a conservative. Nothing con you're conservative, but you're singing songs with the January 6th insurrectionists. Sorry, oh, you're not conservative. Let's go back, though, to Trump's behavior, though, because this is who MAGA Mike supports. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Donya Perry, Michael Cohen's lawyer, who was in the courtroom. Describe the moment where Donald Trump, after being found in violation of a gag order that was imposed on him, like earlier in the day, he had to take the witness and the judge found that he was a liar. But this was in response to Donald Trump, one of Donald Trump's because Eric's lawyer, one of the lawyers made a motion to dismiss the case. They already lost the case. Summary judgments granted against them. <laughs> they're in the they're in the middle the of the trial. It's the craziest part about this whole thing. He already lost the case. I need to remind Donald Trump has already lost this case. This trial, his his the whole show, the whole song and dance he's doing every time he shows up at the courthouse, they're deciding on disgorgement. They're deciding on how much money he is going to have to pay. That is it. They, the case is over. He's lost it. So when he storms out of the courtroom, and we'll show these clips in a bit, and he goes, I actually just won the case. You've already lost the case. They're not <laughs> even deciding that. We've moved past that weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Sorry, Ben. Donya Perry. Well, no, and, the, and just the motion, a motion for directed verdict. That occurs after, if you wanted to make it, which you will lose because you've already lost the case and this is about damage, but the time to make that is not randomly after one witness finishes. You make it after the evidence is presented. So they like choreograph this like weirdo in their own mind, Perry Mason moment. That's why Donald Trump keeps going, Perry Mason, where I guess Trump's lawyer was going to go, and now we demand a dismissal because Cohen admitted that he committed a felony, which Cohen admitted before. <laughs> and then the judge is like, what are you talking about? Denied. What are you talking about? And then Donald Trump slams the table and then walks out of the room, mumbles some words to the press. Eric has to hold Donald Trump's, like, like hold him by the back. And then he walks away like, like in a temper tantrum and let's just watch what went down first let's hear it from donya perry michael cohen's lawyer's perspective uh that she brought exclusively to the midas touch network play the clip and so the second he answered the question in that way uh one of the lawyers got up cliff roberts and said your honor we we demand a directed verdict we've won this case the whole thing falls apart. 
this is a sham. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm paraphrasing a bit, but not much. He he requested a directed verdict in, in the middle of, of the case, which isn't something you do. It's like, I was on MSNBC last night with Lisa Rubin. We were joking. It was like a, an L Woods moment where the whole courtroom erupts and the judge dismisses the case. I mean, it just doesn't, it's not real life. It's play acting. And the judge very swiftly and handily denied that motion, that non-motion. And Mr. Trump pounded the table, literally. I know it's like a trope, you know, that you say about lawyers, like pound the table. He Objection. It, yeah. <laughs> You're out of order. Exactly. Uh, he, uh, and he just stormed out, you know, and, 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 you know, his team and, and all the secret service and, you know, was required to kind of scramble and, and chase after him. But, you know, he was red in the face. He was furious. He, you know, he said something rather that I couldn't quite capture like this is ridiculous or this is a lie or you know something and went out and gave a little impromptu press conference about how he just won the case um and left uh i mean that behavior and republicans are like yeah it's crazy yeah but 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 here's the thing too yes it's his conduct in the courtroom but the republicans are like give this guy the nuclear coats and and it and it shouldn't shock us that that's what they want when they also go arrest Dr. Fauci, mm -hmm. when, when when they go inject bleach in your arms, when they go they want to sing songs with the insurrectionists, when they behave like a death cult. We shouldn't be shocked when they then want to give the nuclear codes to somebody who responds to. A, a, a judge's ruling in a courtroom that was obvious what was going to happen with that level of behavior. That's who you want to have the nuclear codes. And of course, I go into all of Donald Trump's other conduct, but here is the video of Donald Trump leaving the courtroom. And you'll see Eric has to like pat him on the back. And Donald Trump goes out and says, I won. He, he says he, he says he won. He didn't w win. He already lost the case and he lost the motion. And he goes out and says, I, I just won. I just won. And then he walks away with, with, with Eric patting him on the back. Yeah. What's going on with our the witness just admitted that we won the trial and the judge should end this trial immediately. Thank you. is that behavior is so unhinged again it shouldn't matter that you're a republican independent someone not affiliated with political democrat progressive you should say to yourself i need to do everything in my power to make sure that that man has no power over my life, my family's life, my significant other's life, my kids, my neighbors, my country, people I love. I don't care what political party you are from. That is an existential threat. You know, when someone said it to me this way, they go, you know, it's not even a political party. A political party has an organizing principle. This is just a fascist movement that is built on ego and who can out fascist the other. And Donald Trump in New York today also was found in violation of the, or yesterday was found in violation of the gag order imposed upon him on October 3rd. By the way, it's why the Midas Touch reporting by Ron Filipkowski, shout out to our editor in chief, was also so critical because that was cited multiple times in Judge Ngoron's order where Donald Trump was just sanctioned $10,000 that Trump had committed a previous violation that Midas Touch was able to identify on October 19th. We broke the story. Then Don Jr. and Donald Trump attacked us. They said that Midas Touch was giving Judge Ngoron his orders. How ridiculous can you be? <laughs> I would be, be our editor-in-chief wrote a story about a violation of the gag order and giving the judge his orders. But if you want to know if MidasTouch.com is having an impact 
And if growing this community through patreon.com slash Midas Touch is working, I don't know what other better evidence I can give you than, than that. Go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch, M-E-I-D-A-S-T-O-U-C. H, we don't have outside investors, so help grow this independent media platform. In addition to violating the gag order in uh, the New York case, you know there was a gag order imposed in the federal case in Washington, D.C. for Trump's attempt to overthrow the 2020 election. The judge temporarily stayed it at Donald Trump's request. And Judge Chutkin's a law and order, no-nonsense judge. You know, and I think she stated because she knows that Donald Trump's attempt is to try to argue to the court of appeals that the overall case needs to be stayed and delayed while the gag order is pending. And she wants to keep the trial date of March of 2024. She wants that case to go in front of a jury. And so here's how we kind of have to weigh it. And here's how special counsel Jack Smith is handling it. Special counsel Jack Smith made a filing last night. No one's above the law. Donald Trump needs to be treated like everybody else. He's via, he's violating the terms of his release. Forget even if you imposed a gag order. He just threatened Mark Meadows after it was announced that Mark Meadows entered into a immunity deal with the feds and is cooperating against Donald Trump. Trump made a post and basically said, I don't know if Meadows is doing it, but he'd be an idiot if he did do it. He can't be that dumb, you know, words to that effect, which is witness tampering. So special counsel Jack Smith's like, that's a violation of the terms of his release, whether or not there's a gag order. And it shows why you need to impose a gag order. You know, and I think that's the, the question I would have for all of you is, if Judge Chutkin doesn't stay the gag order and it results in the court of appeals, somehow anything can happen. You never know what that panel is going to look like. Temporarily staying the March trial date, how would you want, what would you rather have? The March 2024, I'd rather have both a gag order and the March 2024 trial date. But I think that's the balance that has to be struck right now. And that is something that I think that we will see how it gets resolved. But special counsel Jack I think Smith- we're seeing for, those machinations, Ben, and, and you could totally correct me and say, Brett, you're not a lawyer. You're an idiot if, if, if I'm Whoa. wrong. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You would never call you an idiot. That'd be mean. <laughs> but but I, I think looking at what Judge Angoran's doing in New York with the even the fines for the sanctions makes me believe that he has gamed out a similar strategy as Judge Chuck in here. If he went straight to, you know, instead of a fine, if he went straight to throwing Donald Trump in jail, he could potentially jeopardize the case in future appeals and things like that. So he is creating a record right now of not only did I warn him once, not only did I fine him, not only did I fine him twice, but this kept happening, and that's why I was forced to take the actions that I was taking. Then my analysis, how do you, what do you think? I think your analysis is spot on. And in normal times, Trump's behavior would not be a partisan issue. We would all, as Americans, say this is despicable. This is anti-American. This is treasonous. This is traitorous. So it would actually be easy. Right. But the problem is, is that you have a major political party that's now become a fascist cult movement that supports this conduct mm -hmm. that claims it's a partisan issue. You've got Republican judges appointed by Donald Trump, like Judge Eileen Cannon, who are very similar to MAGA Mike. Trump appointed many MAGA Mikes to the federal bench, people with no judicial experience at all. MAGA Mike. As you heard him say, he calls himself a constitutional lawyer. He's the exact type of person that Donald Trump has appointed. So when you think about a judge, Eileen Cannon, and her rulings, when you think about you know the judge in Texas who always makes the same decisions, finding Biden in violation of anything Biden ever does, <laughs> right? America, because right. there's one district and one division within that district where MAGA files to this judge who's like a MAGA Mike. And he reaches the conclusion, no matter what the answer is, he will rule against Biden. 
And not only that, but like in the most draconian and intrusive way. And so that's the that's the problem that we have to balance. Is and then that, we saw it yesterday too in, in the Elise Stefanik uh, speech uh, for Mike Johnson. That when, speech. When, which was horrific and 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 we don't have it here but when she went off and her whole speech was just full of these same deranged conspiracy theories and chipping away at the rule of law chipping away at our institutions she went off uh, and this democratic party that wants to turn the justice department and uh, sick them on their political enemies like how disgraceful for you as a representative in the united states congress to be spreading these conspiracy theories to be spreading this lie in order to protect a criminal like how disgraceful and it shows you there really aren't these moderate Republicans. Even, right. you know what, like we spent the last few weeks also, not to switch topics, but we spent the last few weeks and we've been showing clips of people like Ken Buck, right, of the House Freedom Caucus and him saying, well, I could never vote for Jim Jordan because he was against uh, voting for the election, right? He was against voting for the election results. Well, then why did you vote for Johnson? Because he, this guy was actually the architect of that whole plan. Why was this guy all of a sudden palatable for you? There's the New York congressman. His name's a, is a Lawler, the New York congressman. Yeah, yeah Mike Lawler. And, and he was like, oh, I'm so reasonable. You know, I, I just I just can't that go. Was, that was his whole thing. He kept right, going on CNN. He kept and, going on a different one. I'm, I'm the reasonable guy in the room. Yeah, they're all bullshit artists. They're all phonies. They're all liars. Because when push comes to shove, they either just got worn down and were like, screw it. I want to go on. I want to go on break. It's the weekend. The weekend's coming up. I don't want to be here for another weekend. Or they just have zero principles whatsoever. And it could be both. It's probably both. Um, and they you know what? They him. think Jim Jordan is a looks like a he's creepy and he looks creepy, right? Yeah. And so you need to package. If you're a MAGA Republican, you have to package it the same way I would. I talked about. Yeah, finding your exactly kind of right. principles. They like a guy who are, looks like a Paul Ryan. They like a guy who looks like a Mike mm -hmm. Johnson. They like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. You know, he's 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 a white guy with Hyatt. his hair parted, with a good head of hair, parted to the side, who's got this, you, well. know, you know, you know, speak, dresses well, all shunks, you know, well, you know, everybody knows this is a biblical, you know, and they think that they could package that through Fox, through right-wing media, that legacy media will let him do his, you know, they, they think that he's kind of the perfect kind of propagandist to, you know, to, to, to do what they want to do. And, you know, when you watch that video of them all close to him, Creepy those were are. all people who cannibalized each other, but for them being close to power, they all wanted to be so physically close to him. That's yeah. why it's such a weird shot because they were actually fighting to be near him and to hope that he gives them committee assignments and that that will be, you know, that will be. And some of them like sell their souls for like bigger office space. Like the, the stories that I've heard, it, it's more and more pathetic every time. I'm like, oh, why did that guy flip his vote? Oh, he promised him a bigger office with more square foot. Really? You're, you're selling out your country yeah. for a bigger office space because like, you, remember they don't care about the country brett they 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 don't they care about their own self-interest one of the worst things that happens to them is that they had the majority and then they had to put forward different you know investigations into hunter biden and fauci and launch all these like weird things for the american people to witness at mass and what have they done nothing other than try and continue to strip away the rights of the american people one of my favorite things is every time they get a new speaker in or something, like all the crazy MAGA people online are always like, great, we could finally release the January 6th footage. It's like, I still don't know what they're expecting to find here other than a bunch of MAGA people beating up police officers and destroying the Capitol, but they really think they got something here. They're like, finally, we're going to be – Tucker Carlson had – all the footage, and he ended up releasing about 15 seconds of the QAnon shaman walking down the hallway by himself and was, went, did that look like an insurrection to you? That was like the best, that was the best, the best they had. The best they could Like, do. just think about it. And, and they rely on this. And I also just, just to show you, because this didn't get enough attention, and 
I didn't have this, uh, you know, uh, prepared for the show, but it's so embarrassing that I wanted to pull it up because it plays into everything we're speaking about. This was one of the speaker candidates as they were going through their private close their round of voting. And he was texting Donald Trump to try to get Donald Trump support. And this is what all of them were doing. And it shows you how freaking pathetic these people are. This is Representative Chuck Fleischman from Tennessee's third district. And Donald Trump posted this basically to humiliate the Republicans and show that he's pulling the strings behind the scenes in these votes in many ways. And this is an actual text from this representative Republican. And and Trump, had, there's no responses from Trump even. It's just this guy texting Trump. Chuck Fleischman, I'm in the speaker race now. Please tell President Trump. Thanks. Five left. Voting now. All candidates. Now 100% Trump. All five. I preach Trump in my speech. Like, how pathetic. Please, please endorse me. Please send out a nice tweet about me. Please send out a nice post on your social. It's so pathetic. It's crafted like a child. What I would love is if you could have swiped and see the different timestamps of how and when he was sending these different texts, like how many minutes apart, because the text is sent like a, like just a complete lunatic for lack of a better word. I mean, who, who's texting like this? It sounds like it's coming from some sort of child that's begging their parent for, yeah. you know, whatever to stay I'm up late. in speaker race. Now I'm Please in speaker don't. race. Now please tell <laughs> president Trump. Thanks. Five minutes left. We're voting, <laughs> voting now all candidates, hundred percent Trump. It's what, like, are what, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you no doing? response to no reply, just no like replies. Yeah. and just the self humiliation that like, uh, like, do you think he's like thinking to himself? He's like, oh my God, is he going to text me back now? Wait, what if I tell him this? I'm going to tell him this. Like, I know. I see the, left. I see the three dots. Is he writing? Shit. The three dots went away. Oh no. <laughs> Let's talk about being left on red. Sheesh. <laughs> and, and, and then you compare that to like president Biden's been there every step of the way with union workers. Again, he joined the picket lines with the United Auto Workers, and a blockbuster deal was achieved. You had Donald Trump going to Michigan and basically saying to the striking workers that you're picketing for the wrong reasons. Donald Trump didn't even go to a union, went to a non-union plant, pretended it was a union plant, like it's the ultimate scab move. And then he had people hold up signs and act like they were union workers for Trump. None of them were union workers. And President Biden just showed up, he showed his support for the unions. There was a plan by the union workers and the union workers were like, look, we get that CEOs should make money. We, we, we want this company to be profitable, but we also know that we deserve to be paid fairly. We deserve to be able to afford homes. We deserve to be able to pay our mortgage and not worry paycheck to paycheck. And by the way, you know, you got MAGA Republicans who are passing laws in their states to bring back child labor and paying them, you know, lower than minimum wage, abolishing minimum wage, you know, type legislation being circulated, you know, and, 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 and look, Democrats are saying, look, all good. You want to, you know, you become a billionaire. Great. Just pay your fair share. You become a deca millionaire. Great. Great. Just pay your fair share. You shouldn't be paying less than the auto worker, than the school teacher, than the firefighter, than the Amer average American worker. You, sh you just shouldn't be paying less than the worker. That, that, do we agree that that is, it should just be fair and you're going to fight again? No, it should be unfair. We should have socialism for billionaires. That's the Republican platform. So the United Auto Workers Union announced on Wednesday evening it had reached a tentative agreement with Ford one of the three automakers that have been on strike for almost six weeks. The UAW's blockbuster deal will see Ford workers pay jump more in four years than all pay raises in the past two decades combined, the union says. If approved by union leaders and members, it will see wages increase 25% across the four and a half year country. One of the things too, that is part of the MAGA Republican playbook too, because they want to create the chaos in addition to adding the deficit is to keep the wages low mm. and then allow corporations to collude and to uh, engage in price gouging and to have very minimal antitrust enforcement to allow corporations to do anything they want to manipulate the prices, to cause chaos and then, and then blame the Democrats for it. The Democrats said they were going to fix it. You guys can't fix it. Remember the playbook. Remember the playbook and going back to the intro 
the question that I asked is, which America do you want to live in? One of the things we do here on the Midas Touch Network is we try to be surgical in how we call it out. We show you the evidence. We show you the exhibits. We certainly tell you how I, how I feel, how we feel, but we lead with the facts and then we leave it to you because ultimately it's up to you. It's up to us. We need your help. We need to be in this together and we need you to be a messenger for our democracy and to share this YouTube channel, to share the videos, let people know about the Midas Touch Network and how we are remaking what the news should have always been, what it maybe once was, fact-based, evidence-based. Sometimes I'll get emotional. Sometimes I'll let you know how I feel. I saw some of those comments saying, Ben, breathe. Some guess I'm speaking from the heart. <laughs> but ultimately, it's a fact-based analysis. I want to give a shout out to all of our great editorial team at MidasTouch.com who have broken blockbuster story after blockbuster story these past few months and especially these past few weeks. You see the impact they are having. So if you want to support the work of the independent journalism here and get access to exclusive features, including the after show. Oh, patreon.com slash Midas touch P A T R E O N.com slash Midas touch. If you got a pen and paper or you got your phone, write it down right now. It's P A T R E O N.com slash M E I D A S T O U C H. On today's after show, we're going to talk about how now convicted felon Donald Trump lawyer Jenna Ellis attacked Midas Touch during the early days. We got a bit of, of a history Midas with Touch. Jenna Ellis. We're going to yeah. have a little bit of history with Jenna we, Ellis. We, so called, we'll go... we tried to warn her. Jen. We tried to warn we Jenna Ellis on multiple occasions. We literally did. We, we were like, you're going to get in trouble. You're going down a bad path. <laughs> we told her. And she blocked we us. We got farted on by Rudy Giuliani. And then she called us. Ah, we'll save it for the after show. Save it so for the after make show. Make sure to check it out on patreon.com. Slash minus seven. Ben, brothers, we're also doing a Q&A with the patrons coming meet this us. Monday, meet us some, which meet I'm us always super excited for. That's happening this Monday. So if you oh, want to oh. uh, get the invite to the Q&A and join us and meet us face to face over Zoom, then you could do that also on, on Patreon. A lot, lot going on on Patreon these days. I love it. It's, it's I really am great. so thrilled to meet and love to meet you. So if you want to meet me, Brett and Jordy on the Zoom, it's Monday, October 30th. The link is on patreon.com slash Midas Touch, where you can access it. Um, again, patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Thank you all so much. Make sure you register to vote. Make sure you register others to vote who are pro-democracy voters. Mm -hmm. It's one of the ways you can help. The folks, best there are elections right now. I just want to be clear about that. There are elections right now in 2023 happening around the country. There are elections in Virginia. There are elections Virginia. in Ohio. There are elections in Mississippi. There are elections going on across the country. So make sure wherever you are, no matter what state you are, make sure that you know what's on the ballot. Ohio has a very important initiative to enshine abortion rights in the Ohio state constitution. This is what Republicans were trying their hardest to keep off the ballot. That's every reason why you should be showing up and why you mm -hmm. should make sure that you vote. Virginia is going to be a very tight race. And I know we have a big listenership in Virginia. Make sure you get out and vote blue for democracy. Vote D for democracy. How about that? Ooh. Up and down the ballot. I want to see this community here, the Midas Mighty, make some real, real change. Thank you, everybody, for watching this episode of the Midas Touch podcast. It's been an honor. We're grateful for everything you do for our democracy. We'll see you at the after show at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. It takes about 20 minutes, 30 minutes for it to load because it's not done live. So you'll see it there soon. And then we'll see you on the next episode of the Midas Touch podcast. Jordy, take it away. Shout out to the Midas Mighty! The Midas
At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy, and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.